all over this very planet Earth. The director of Radio Biafra, the director of Biafra Television, and by the very special grace of God Almighty in heaven, Elohim, Chikotika Biafra, Rumiyanine, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. This evening we are going to lecture. This evening we are this going to fake. These niggas is frauds and I'm trying to dodge. This evening this even the blind will be able to see even those who are foolish as a result of their encounter all the unfortunate circumstance of being born in a place called Nigeria. This very evening, morning, noon or night, depending on where you are, they will all receive some sense. They will become people you, you can rely upon to reason and to discern properly. But before we go into all of that, we are going to pray. As it is customary with us here on this noble platform, we hand over all our proceedings to God Almighty in heaven for him to take pride of place in our lives. And as always, I am going to pray in the oldest language on this very planet Earth. I am going to pray in the language of the ancients. I will pray in the language of heaven itself because even right now the angels circling the throne of Almighty in heaven they are worshipping him. We must pray. Ezi onye wanye na chineke nanke den soma rumbo ebi ebi. Nanyi nke bini imi igwe. Onyanyi netu ebi ebi. Kahare den sombo ni nene imendu wani gobyo nibo onye masurum banyi ni imen. Don't you open on the Yana Chicken in a corner of a racket corner on your women? Upgrade Jamma Canyon, I go to the Canyon at Togan's up. Baby, baby. Yeni Nicolette and Rubregi sing. Mona Madonna, we see a lanyagin. A new thank you, Gray, and walk on corner, Gamin and Yan. Nay, no, but you make a butchina can and cook again. Obula di nyeni nebu su ni len kendi aga. Nki me li gwe. Na wisi ala nyege. Li hino obo alwa kake kambali gwe na egosi. Obo na nege bu chine kena kena deka gade pundi ya. Li hino oku gini nebu ye na emen. I hon bli deri de wu ya. Di kisi we bebi ya. Manamu wo manam madu. Na biafra gade re onye mwom na chine kena de ngozi. Obe ma iji wene nyugo tonini na sopro nini. E jamma nini ne. Di hino wago nye dekage. Mo wago ge hino zo kure na anyo wanya na ge faro sin. Ani ge buono, ani ge bule ge bule ge boko hanso. Gai ga bro ga buono mo nye mwom na chine ken na dengozi. Ani ge fege no zo zirezi. Age ji biafra we choro ga aja. Obe ma iji wena boko hanso. No po chinke ta ki webe anon yene ndege. Le kwa mwa gwa blad ndi nke ji eji. Nu li iko ni ebeli ne di chichi no bode kwen su buzu na ejiri. Sina ke kwen su ni hon jow no chichiri wwe na poto mwe. Nezi e nezi anye mwome hwe me gidegi. Nozo ni ne di chichi oku wwe na bra ma wwe chichi. Mano bo nane gibu chine ken na wwenye na bwara me. Anye wwe na doge ki wwe bwara anye me. Ke mamma ge ne bre ki wwe zuwe ke ni mendu anye. Ki uri ki wwe chane ba anye no. Kiwe nyanyi mwa nke hona nyanyi mwa mbekota wane na wane. Wezu gula nye kuro. Anyi uku. Anyi ofo. Bia kiwe tinye zindu ni manye. Kiwe duwa nye nozo nene nke ziyo mwemegi. Kwa gabu ni kwete mazo. Uwa nene geji biafra we mata. Haga ase. Na obo yeba ki hire ba magi nki kwete mazo. Mane. Ani gajage mawe toge goza hansore. Ma bouli ege elu, stene ebi gebi, ma rone ebi gebi, ise, ise, ise. Now that we have called upon heaven, we are going to proceed to preach the gospel for that which we are born. 
This is the gospel of heaven, the gospel of hope, the gospel of redemption. I would not use the word unfortunately, but if you want to listen to us via social media, please spread this far and wide. You go to Twitter, you will be able to listen to us. It is a far more sophisticated, far more intelligent platform. There you can also make your contributions. I will be able to read your questions from there. If you want to put any questions across to us later on, when our lines does open, please, I will strongly recommend that you do not call us. You go to Twitter and you post your question there. I will go through them and I will answer your questions. This afternoon from here in Houston, Texas, depending on where you are, we are going to view the preamble to this very lecture series, or should I say the lectures that we have for you today. Because here on this glorious platform in the past, when we say something, a lot of you do not take what we say very seriously. But the manifestation of those predictions or prophecies, if I can put it that way, goes a long way to justify that we have been sent by heaven to do this very work upon the lives of men. This evening, you will not believe it. You have to read it to believe it. Do you know that Janja Weed, Fulani Janja Weed, do you know what they said about their relationship with our Yoruba brothers and sisters? They say that the Yorubas to them are like their wives. I hope you're listening very, very carefully. To them, they said the Yorubas are their wives or their slaves. I did not say it. This is what came out of the mouth of Arewa United Consultative Forum. It was published by a Yoruba-owned news platform, Sahara Reporters, so you can attest to its authenticity. What is very shocking about this is what we have known from the past. As I told you a couple of days ago, what they want to do is to subdue the Yorubas first, and then they will now move into the east with the might of the army. And they have made Imo State their capital, that is their launching pad from where they are going to launch attack against us because they have installed their stooge, Hopu Zodema, who never won any elections. They have also installed a Fulani Janjaweed slave in the name of George Obiozo. That is why I don't know if I have announced this before, but I'm making it very clear. Ohanez and they will can no longer meet in public because they are enemies of the people. Hope Uzodema himself cannot come out in public anymore. He can run in state from Abuja if he wants. Ohanez and Bonandiara and Yoshi can do all the like from Abuja. Anywhere they gather in public, they will be scattered by us. We are making it very clear. And I also want to put the world on notice this very moment, or should I say afternoon from here in Houston, Texas, that Imo State has been selected as the launching pad from where the ginger weed will resist any efforts to remove them from our land. The same way they have converted Oyo and Ondo to their launch pads, in terms of the attack, they have persistently and consistently launched against the Yoruba nation. Imo State has been selected for that very purpose, and our people must be very, very careful. To that effect, therefore, any village head, any traditional ruler, any traditional prime minister, any president general from Imo State that is found to be aiding or abating the government of Hopu Zodema will be seen as an enemy of the people. They become legitimate target for reprisal attacks because they are the ones now encouraging the Fulani Janja to come into our land to lay it to waste. They are enemies of the people. Imo State is the new battleground and we are going to fight to the very last man to ensure that our land remains as spiritually pure and sanctified as it has been from old. This very day, what we are not going to allow what Arewa Consultative Forum or Arewa United, whatever their name is, what they said 
about our friends and our brothers and our neighbors, the Oduduwa Republic, to become our portion. I will read this very headline for you. If you doubt me, you go and Google it. You will see that what I'm telling you is absolutely correct. North, Southwest shouldn't fight. As we have always known, the alliance that keeps the zoo Nigeria going is a criminal alliance between the forces of repression from the Janjaweed North and those I call reprobates. People I see as, what, what should I call them? They call them intelligent fools from the West. They are the ones keeping the zoo together. And today they have come to revive that alliance. That alliance was forged before they attacked Biafra. They have gone now to try to replicate it, but thankfully the likes of Pai Adabanjo is there, Afeni Fere is there, OPC is there, Ghani Adams is there, and a few others that will resist them. Because this very game plan they are now putting into place, or they are playing out, they have done in the past. And that is why our lives, or should I say our life is as miserable as it is today, as it's ever been. The North, full and enough, and the Yoruba West shouldn't fight. They are like husband and wife, slave and master. Can you believe that? The Fulani are calling the Yorubas their slaves, and nobody is saying anything about this. It just broke. The news just broke today. I got this information today. Yoruba is the wife of a Fulani husband. Yoruba is the slave, whereas Fulani is the master. They went on to say that this group advise the North and the West, which is Yoruba land, not to engage in any dispute. They will not mention the East because they see the East as the natural enemy. And this is the mistake that the Yorubas have always made. They are about to make the one that will swallow them, that will make what happened to Afonja in a Lauren look like a child's play. If at all they fall for this. But I'm sure Paya Debanja will not allow it to happen. Not Papa Shoranti won't allow it to happen. Not any of the big hitters from a funny fair will allow this nonsense to prevail. But you must listen to me very carefully to what I have to say today because this is the problem with Nigeria. People do not reason, they do not think, they do not discern, they don't ponder, they do not reflect. They never ever do until it is too late. How can Fulani be referring to Yoruba people as their wives? and as their slaves in the open. In the open, not hidden, in the open. The same thing they want to do to us with Kopu Sodema and the church of Biyoso, of Ohanes, and Diatro, and Diyoshi. They can no longer gather in public. Anytime they gather in public, they, of course they know, they know what we're capable of. Arewa, United Consultative Forum, I'm reading the news for you so you understand it very clearly. Not from us, not from any Biafra platform. This is from Sahar Reporters, owned by Yoruba Man. So you can know it is real. Arewa United Consultative Forum has called on northerners across the country, northerners, including Igbo people in Benue State. That is how lopsided, how skewed, how idiotic the whole Nigerian nonsense is to me. They are calling Igbo people in Benue State the north, northern part of Nigeria. People don't know the type of mess they are in. This gospel will preach every blessed day in the hope that people will at least be able to reason, to reason properly. Now, listen. They have called on Northerners across the country not to retaliate against Southerners, not, not to retaliate against Yoruba. They said not to retaliate against Southerners, which includes people from the East, living in Kanu, in Kaduna, in Zaria, in all the Janjaweed core North. Understand this very clearly. 
their fight, they claim, is with Yoruba. But they are saying, don't attack Southerners because they know that the majority of people living in the North are from the East. Non-indigenous. I hasten to add. Not to retaliate against Southerners following the recent clash between Yoruba and Hausa communities. Not Yoruba and Hausa, but Yoruba and Fulani inspired terrorists in Shasha market in Ibadan or your state capital. What they want to do in Imo state. What they want to do in Imo state with hope those other man, some idiots uh, looking for money, hungry people. That is what they want to replicate in Imo state. What is happening in Oyo? Fulani is trying to take over Oyo. They know that the Fulani market is no longer selling. They now put Hausa in front. Fight between Hausa people. Do you see? Do you see this? They think they're clever. They, we know, all know that the terrorists in Nigeria are Fulani people, not Hausa. Fulani. We know that very well. Now there is a war or altercation, so to speak, going on in your state in Ibadan. I, at a place called Shasha Market a few days ago. Now they're bringing in Hausa because they know that if they say it's Fulani and uh, Yoruba, nobody will know. In fact, they will say to Yoruba, kill all the Fulanis there because that all of them are murderers and killers. They know that very well. So what have they done? They now cleverly said there was a fight between Hausa and Yoruba. You people should stop making this mistake you make all the time. There is no fight. There was never any fight between um, Hausa and Yoruba. Never, ever, ever. There was a fight between Fulani terrorists and the Yoruba people in a battle in you know, your state. That is the fact. But because Fulani is bad market, the name Fulani now means darkness. It means terrorism. It means rape. It means murder. It means mayhem. It means insecurity. That is the reason why, I repeat, that is the reason why they have infused Hausa into the conflict. And now when they knock, do tell you how duplicitous and evil Nigeria is in the north. They know that not many Yoruba people are living in the north. They know that very well. They know that people living in the north and doing their businesses in the, in the core north, by which I mean the 12 or 13 Sharia states of Fulani Janjaweed in the north. They know the Yorubas are not there. They know that people who are residing there, uh, stubborn Igbo people, some of them will be killed very soon. They'll be killed in the north. And I do not care. I do not care. They've been killing us since 1945. They killed us in 2021. Because when the attack starts, it's bound to happen anyway. They will say we are killing Southerners. And when you go to the map of the world, or of the Zoological Republic, you will see that in the south of Nigeria, you have Yoruba killed terrorists in the battle. And rightfully so. Are you feeling what I'm saying? In order to justify any what, what, what is future what's the beginnings, they said, do not attack Southerners. They don't, because they don't want to use the word Yoruba. Because if they say, don't attack Yoruba in the north, people will be asking them, where are the Yoruba in the north? So when it comes to political uprising of this nature, they group the Yoruba and the, and the Igbo as one. They group Ududua and Biafra as one people, and they call you Southerners. Do you understand the trick? I don't know how to explain this so that people can understand what I'm saying. The reason why they're using the word Southerners is because when the attack starts, it's bound to happen anyway, they will say we are killing southerners and when you go to the map of the world or of the zoological republic you will see that in the south of nigeria you have oduduwa in the west and you have in the east biafra so you will say oh southerners are being killed in the north you will not say that Igbo people are being killed in the north 
because the fight which they are alluding to happened in the West. Yoruba killed terrorists in Ibadan, and rightfully so. Are you feeling what I'm saying? In order to justify any future killings of Biafran people in the North, they are now saying, do not kill Southerners. I don't know if people are following. I don't know if they're following what I'm telling them. I don't know if they are following what I am explaining to them. I don't know if people are following what I am trying to get across to them. Why they infused uh, 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 South into this mayhem is because when they start killing Igbo people in Sabongeri in Kano, they will say, we are killing Southerners. They will tell BBC. BBC World Service, BBC House of Service, B even the stupid BBC, they will start writing, oh, it's Southerners, Southerners, because they know that there are no Yorubas in Southern Galician. Understand the way there is in the zoo. That is why we take time to analyze the news for you, so you understand it. A lot of us, we are not English people. We have to go to school to study English language. So when they write all these, their lies, or try to, to change these narratives in English language, it is our duty and responsibility to lay out the facts the way they are. And that is exactly what we are doing this afternoon from Houston in Texas. The group said that the North and West should not engage in any dispute. They never mentioned the East. Likening them to husband and wife or slave and master relationship because of their similar traditions and religious beliefs. That was what I warned you in the past about the Fulani. The same way they have come to Imo State, they're saying some of them are doing Islamic calling in Owere, doing uh, uh, Islamic calling in Ihiagwa. Very soon, when they strike you and won't take over your land, they will say, we have similarities in religion. The only reason why they are saying this is because of the likes of Tinubu, who is a Muslim, the likes of Lai Muhammad, who is a Muslim, the likes of Saraki, it basically because they took over a Lauren from the Yoruba people. Are you understanding me? Now they have similar beliefs, they have similar culture, which is a lie, of course, because Yoruba is distinct from Fulani. Fulani, they're not even indigenous to Nigeria to start with. Understand what I'm saying at this precise moment. The reason why they said that Hausa people are fighting Yoruba in a battle is to draw Hausa into the equation so that Hausa can kill people for them in the north. That is why they're doing it. So Hausa can start killing people in the north. And when they kill Igbo people, when they kill Biafrans in the north, they will say they are killing Southerners. Because if you look at the map of the zoo called Nigeria, we do the worst in the south. We are the problem is happening. So also is Biafra land. It's a very clever ploy, very clever move. That is what the advisors are telling them. That is the way they advise them. That is why our people must rise. They must be alert all the time. You must be able to reason. If you do not reason in the zoo, they will cheat you. They will bamboozle you. They will make all that you learned and studied at the various schools you attended to become a waste, an absolute waste. Yoruba is like their slave. If they said it in the open, this is a Yoruba newspaper. Yoruba is like their wife. They also condemned the crisis that resulted in the loss of lives and properties worth millions of naira. Describing it as the handiwork of the enemies of the country, they have gone back. That is what they always do. They, tell, they talk about unity. Always put it at the back of your mind. As I told you before, anybody discussing one Nigeria is putting your life in danger. When they kill you, the first thing they do is, oh, please, let's forget and come together as one for the sake of the country. Which country? Is it the country that has given you drinking water? Or is it the country that you have light? Or is it, is it the country that you have good roots? Therefore, my question is, as always, tell me one single thing that can compel you to be proud of Nigeria. Name that thing. Give me, oh, is it a... Is it, what do you have? Is it the population that you have that is starving, that is ranked amongst the, the poorest in the world? What do you have to be proud of? Nothing. 
Now, this unity, unity, unity based on what? Let somebody define this unity for me. When hydrogen and oxygen comes together, when these molecules come together to form water, which is H2O, is it one molecule of hydrogen and two molecules of oxygen? O2, H plus, I'm not, I'm not a chemist, but I'm just only guessing. H, which is one molecule of hydrogen plus O2, two molecules of oxygen. If you did your primary chemistry or elementary chemistry, you will know, gives you water. Before two of them can come together, they must have receptors to explain to you that what is in the spirit is also in the living, here on a morning and matter. Before hydrogen can agree to form water with oxygen, before hydrogen and oxygen can come together to become water, drinking water, this water that I have in front of me, they must agree to be one. There are something called receptors. One must open up for the other to come in so that together they can form the drinking water that you have in front of you. So the unity of hydrogen and oxygen results in portable drinking water that anybody can have. Tell me what comes out of the unity of all these savages in the zoo called Nigeria. Name one single thing. That is nothing. I'm not asking them to do anything special for you. Common electricity. You know, they, they are, they are, they, they, they are as backward to tell you how evil they are. Even the factories that we are working before, where some of your fathers were employed, meaningfully employed, they destroyed all of them. 20, 20, no, no, I almost said 40 years ago, there was running water all over the place. 45, 50 years ago, there was running water. Anybody who went to Library Avenue Primary School in Omoa. I think it was the best at that time. You know that during the break time, we cross over to the library, to Omaha Library, to go and drink water. You know that our tap was running. The tap in the primary school, library venue, our tap was running. We can go there, we queue, and we drink water. Stay from the tap. PWD, Public Works Department in Omaha was working. You can go there and see them pumping water and treating water in the afternoon. This was 40, 45 years ago. Something that was working 40, 45 years ago in the year 2021 is no longer working. Now, what is there to be proud of Nigeria about? Just explain this to me. In the past, there used to be electricity. In the past, as children, we used to watch O'Connor's Club. We used to watch um, um, Zebrodaya, Masquerade. What do you watch today? We used to appear on children's variety show on NTA Channel 6 in our back. Are those things happening now? Do you have electricity to even watch television? Every Saturday night, all over the place, 7 to 7.30 in the evening, everybody is glued to the television watching O'Connor's Club. Go and ask. Not foreign, and not, it, it wasn't made in Hollywood, not made anywhere in Europe. These are local content made locally. Are those things happening now? Why are they not happening? Because the zoo called Nigeria is always moving backwards. Now, you have no running water, you have no electricity, you have nothing going for you. Even the, the second-hand dock record that we used to buy in Aba, second-hand clothing in Aba, Oba Sanjo shut it down. Even the Oroko we used to eat, stockfish we used to eat from Aba, they closed everything down. There used to be a fertilizer company, I think, in Onem. Is it working? The answer is no. We used to have refineries. Iwacha refinery. Onem refinery, is it working? It used to employ millions of people. If you include all the spin-off, all the economies that depended on these functioning refineries, then, let me tell you, Iwacha seaport was working. People were employed. All of those things shut down. And somebody's talking about one Nigeria as if Nigeria has anything to offer any meaningful human being except all those corrupt, idiotic, kleptomedical politicians. All their life is they steal. 
to the extent they now went to Lagos and brought a 419 in the person of who opposed him and made him the governor of Imo State. I, I'm still on only one topic. Today, Fulani is coming because they know nothing will happen to them. Fulani is coming out to say that Yoruba is their wife. <laughs> oh, dear me, Zoological Republic. Because they know that they cannot fight a war on three fronts. They know that very well. You see, they think they are clever. Whoever is advising them must know that you have IPOB. We are more intelligent than them. They think that they know they cannot be fighting. They cannot move men and arms to the west and also move men and arms to the east. So they had to cool to dampen Yoruba, their wife. They need to make Yoruba their wife and their slave. Hey, can you imagine? <laughs> Fulani said Yoruba is their wife. No wonder Facebook doesn't want me to broadcast today on their platform. Are you following what I'm telling you? Are you now appreciating the depth of mess Yoruba people are in? Do you not appreciate it? I think somebody said to some of the flavors, call them sophisticated morons. You're sophisticated, but you're a moron. Fulani says you are their wife. You are their slave. Don't take my word for it. Go and Google it. Go and uh, go to Sahara Reporters. I'm sure it's there. North, South, West shouldn't fight. They are like husband and wife, slave and master. <laughs> Our Lord God, the Lord of all the hosts of heaven, in 2021, because what goes around comes around. I warned them, they did not listen. Today they have come out in the open to say that the Yoruba people, a very proud race, is their slave. They cite similar traditions and beliefs because one of the traditional rulers of a Yoruba territory reports to the Sultan of Sokoto. The Emir of Eloran reports to the Sultan of Sokoto. Yoruba is their wife because they conquered Eloran and took it from the Yoruba people. That is why Yoruba is their wife and slave. The same thing they want to try in Imo State. <laughs> dear me. You will hear the story very soon in a matter of days. And we're not wasting time on that one. They condemned the crisis in a statement signed by their president, Al Haji Adon Shuaibu Dan Sudu. The forum recalled how the country had produced great leaders across ethnic lines, working to promote once again unity of the country. Everything is unity, unity, unity. And they went on to read out names. They don't even know their history. The idiot said that um, it was um, the Sadwana of Sokoto, Ahmadu Bello, who appointed, who appointed, came to the West and appointed uh, S.L. Akintola as the, as the governor of the West because they are not aware of history. They do not know history. They go to the mosque, they go and do the Babiala, they go to Alamajri schools, and they, they teach them what I call jaundiced history. Jaundiced history. And that is what they regurgitate all the time when they speak on issues that is quite clearly above their station, things they know nothing about. The North and South are like husband and wife. And the Fulani is now marrying Yoruba. <laughs> no wonder they said they will not, they will not leave their forest. Sir Samuel Akintola, Esel Akintola, was appointed by Sir Amadou Bello, which is pure rubbish, as the premier of the Southwest, pure bunkum, turning history on its head. But they got some things right. When you go on, they appointed go on who was a Christian from the Middle Belt. They said, "Hey, come! You know that's what I beautiful people said. Oh, come! You're you're a, you're a Christian. Come! Oh, come! Let us uh, come together and make Nigeria one." Today, the whole of the Middle Belt is gone. They are killing Christians in the Middle Belt. That is the way they roll. They come to you. They pat you on the back. They cajole you. Eventually, they will slaughter you. That's what they did to go on and his people. And exactly what they intend to do to the great Eurobaris, which is very, very sad indeed. If they allow this thing to happen. If they are, of course, go on appointed or Bafemi Awolo, the only finance minister in a military regime in the history of African politics. But that's for another day. Then he said 
that Nigeria relied on resources of the north before the discovery of oil. What is that resource from the north? Granite. Ordinary granite. The peanut you eat, ah, granite you eat. Which country ever survived on granite? The pyramids you built were fake. You build platforms underneath and then you start. Fake, it is there. And I want the pictures everywhere. The fake pyramid they have, they used, they built a scaffolding underneath and then they dropped a few bags of granite on top of it. Who told you? The only benefit, if you can call it that, that the South received from your granite was the transportation of that granite from Kanu to Igwacha, where they moved it to England for processing. How can granite feed a whole nation? See how they lie and deceive themselves. These are those in the mold of that journalist Kadira Ahmed. People that see the truth and prefer to spew out lies and deception. Lies and deception. They claim they, they not was feeding everybody. Do you see what they teach me? I blame Jonathan for this nonsense. For opening al schools for them. You see what you have done. This is what they're teaching them. That the not who when did they not feed everybody? When? When the East relied on palm oil and manufacturing, the West relied on cocoa and manufacturing, you had only granite in the North. And during this very period, every part of the zoo, every major component had their own constitution. You were on your own. At what point did your granite feed everybody? When? Was it when Nigeria was... We had the three autonomous regions, the east, the west, and the north. Do you see how they lie? Do you see how they deceive all of you? And you, every blessed day, you fall for their rubbish. Every day, you fall for their nonsense. Look at the lies they're spewing out. But uh, unfortunately for them, that's what, that's what they call me, the, the biggest criminal. <laughs> because we catch them and we expose them. We catch the idiots and we expose them for who they are, a bunch of retarded liars, deceivers. If this is what Britain asks you to say today, you are mistaken. They must know we exist. Anytime you lie, we catch you. Go and look at it. Look at all the economic... Pro How did Awala manage to build Liberty Stadium? Money from where? Not money from oil. Money from cocoa. If you don't know, let me tell you. All the things you did in the north was grant. The reason why, if you go and because they don't study, they don't know history. If you go and study the reason why Nigeria was amalgamated, the north and the southern protectorate, the reason why they amalgamated the north and the south was because the north was poor. Go and read the submissions of Frederick Lugard to the House of Commons. Go and read it very, very well. You, Janjaweed, go and study for once in your useless lives. You will see, they asked Lugard, why are you mixing the North and the South? He said, because the North is poor. If we do not match them together, the North will go bankrupt. That was the reason why do you have this useless, nonsensical contraption called Nigeria. Look at how they are lying. If you are feeling Nigeria, why would Lugard say that you are poor? You have nothing. Why? Oh, these people that are sick in the brain. He said that they are feeding the whole of Nigeria, which is a lie, of course, until the discovery of oil. He said that General Motala Muhammad picked up Basanjo as his second in command. He is now telling you years of cooperation between Yoruba and the Fulani. If, if Yoruba people accept this very narrative, it means they are also complicit in what's happening in Nigeria today. Also, Babangida picked a southerner as a second in command, just as General Buhari picked, they didn't want to say an Igbo man or a Biafran, they said a southerner, which is a bit too kiwe. A bit too kiwe saw the nonsense they were doing and decided to resign. A bit too kiwe said, I'm not gonna be a part of this rubbish. Under Babangida, go and read your history. These things were happening before our eyes. We were not told before our eyes. Thankfully, I was able to read newspapers because after my father must have finished reading this, I will go and pick them up and be reading them. I knew everything that transpired. Ebutu Kiwe said no. I think it was in the year um, 1984. 
85, if I'm not mistaken, 85. They took over power uh, from this animal in 85. In 86, Independence Day, 1st of October, Ukiwe declined to join Babangida to take the salute. On 1st of October, 1986, please correct me if I'm wrong. That day, Babangida wore a naval uniform, like Ukiwe, because Ukiwe declined to attend and resigned his position as the second in command. Here they're saying he picked a, you know, now we have threatened them so much danger they can no longer pronounce Biafra or pronounce Yibo anymore. They can no longer do it. Or East, never. And you go here. He said that Babangida picked a southerner. Never. He never mentioned the southerner's name to tell you how evil Fulani is. Never mentioned the southerner's name. But when it came to Buhari picking Tunday Idiabon, they mentioned his name. They said Buhari picked today Idiabon. But when Babangida picked Ebutu Kiwe, they said he picked a southerner. Are you now listening? By southerner, they mean that Yoruba and the Ibu Dudua and Biafra are one. That is what they are saying, in essence. If you can read between the lines, that is exactly what they are saying. He said, right from time, even Buhari also picked Yemi uh, Oshibajo, uh, uh, Abacha picked Oladi Kodia as a second in command. So Yoruba and the Fulani have been dividing Nigeria and are sharing the national cake. They have been having fun. Well, why should we fight any battle? Because a new generation of Yorubas have now come up and seen the mistakes of those that have gone before them. That is why they want Oduduwa Republic. That is why we want Biafra Republic. Now they are reminding Yoruba people that you have always been second to us. We have always picked you. No wonder they said you are our wife and our slave. We have always picked you. They can never ever tell you we are a Yoruba man picked a Fulani man. No, it's always Fulani picking Yoruba. Have you seen it? He also went on to say that um actually what you made to Nubu, that uh the, basically that people are trying to sabotage uh uh bola made to Nubu, the same way they sabotage the abiola whereas it is full and that sabotage the abiola not Yoruba nation if it were the Yoruba nation that actually sabotaged the abiola why do you think uh, they went into nadeko and fought very very vigorously you don't think that we know what they plan. They plan what they plan to do is before is that is that they uh, basically Nigeria is an Islamic country. So after an Islamic so-called Buhari administration, an Islamic uh, Tinubu administration will take over. That's what they want to do. After Tinubu's Islamic administration, then El Rufai will take over from the north. Islamic. That's what they want to do. They think we don't know. Of course we know. We know all their stupid childish games. That is why they said that the Yorubas are their wives and their slaves. Turning history upside down. Yoruba that fought very hard for June 12th. You are now saying that the Yoruba people sabotaged Abiola when it was you people in the north that said no to Abiola. Did Abiola not bankroll and finance all of you from the Janjaweed north? Wasn't Abiola very close to Babangida? Did he not finance Babangida? Was Abiola not a Muslim the same way that Tinubu is? You killed him, and now you're turning around. Do you see how they behave? You're not turning around to blame Yoruba for the death of their son. How sad you people are. They say that uh, these are the same people who are now instigating misunderstanding and problems between Southerners and Northerners, not Yoruba and Hausa as he claimed before. See the way they keep playing with words. If you are very foolish, you fall for it. If you're very foolish, you fall for it. But now you can understand the reason why they have given money to Facebook, given money to the media in the zoo to cover all these things. That is what they do. That is what they specialize in. Lies and deception. Lies and deception. And that is why here on this platform, we keep exposing them. Here on this platform, we keep exposing them. And we shall continue to do so until the zoo disintegrates beyond recognition. Go and read the talk. They say that uh, Yoruba is their slave. And continuing on this vein, that is the reason why every time they lie, they deceive. That is that girl called Kadira Ahmed. That people are now saying, oh, uh, what she said is correct. But they think 
that we don't know history. We know everything happening in this zoo because we are part and parcel of the extremism, the banditry, the lawlessness, the insecurity brought about by the Fulani Janjaweed. We know all of that. These people talking rubbish today, they can never rise up. The same Kandira Ahmed cannot rise up and say it is not a good thing that every service chief is, is full on it, that every head of a security agency is full on it. She will never condemn it. She will never condemn the fact that the head of customs is full on it, head of immigration is full on it, everything is full on it. She will never say it. Because they think all of you are stupid. They think you are foolish. But how mistaken they are. How mistaken. The somebody wrote that this Kadir Ahmed is is good at doing what their forefathers did, which is takia to deceive you, because in Islam is allowed to use lies and deception to defeat unbelievers, the infidels, as they call them. This girl Kadira Ahmed, who was crying, she was in Zamfara, crying that bandits have run them over in Zamfara. She was the one who was crying. Now, people from the south are saying, no, we don't want to cry the same way you cried in Zamfara. She's complaining. Do you see how they behave? This same girl has never, ever condemned El Rufai. All of you listening to my program, even those listening from under the bed, those hiding behind their wife's rapper, listening to us, you know what I'm saying to be correct. Who amongst you doesn't know that it was Governor El Rufai of Kaduna State that went to West African countries to the Sahel region to pay his fellow Fulani murderers and killers for to stop killing people in, in southern Kaduna? How did they get into the country? How those that El Rufai went to pay money to to stop coming to southern Kaduna to kill people, how did they get into the country? None of you can ask yourselves this question. Your brain, I don't know what you do with your brain cells. What, what is the function of your brain? Is it just to eat, to procreate, to steal, to cheat, to lie, to gossip? Is that all your brain is there for? El Rufai, by his own admission, the governor of Kaduna State traveled out of Nigeria to go and give money to some people. Who are those people he gave money to? They asked him. He said, these are killers and murderers from the Sahel. They are Fulani. They came to avenge the death of a Fulani uh, 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 in in Kaduna State. You traveled outside to go and pay killers, not to come in, to kill. How did these killers come in anyway? So are you saying these killers, they crossed the borders of the North with AK-47 and no immigration officer stopped them? Oh, no, no, sorry. They came in and somebody gave them weapons in Nigeria. Who gave them weapons with which they killed in Southern Kaduna in Nigeria, the Nigerian army? All of you, you know all these things. You keep hiding. You keep you keep dodging the truth all the time. Why, I ask. And I ask this thing, question to, to that young woman, Kadira Ahmed. Kadira Ahmed, I'm asking her, did you condemn El Rufai when he went to pay your fellow Fulani people in the Sahel to stop killing us in South Kaduna? What did you say then? You said nothing because you're full and you people are part and part, including Atika Babak. They are all in this game. Did you see how they defend themselves? They can never condemn what is going on. All these people that he needs together. And one little one idiot from the East will rubbish against ESN. Do you see how the Fulanese are cooperating? Now they want to enter into Europe, they want to enter into their psyche, into their brain. Oh, we are one people. Remember, you Yorubas, you have Muslims in your midst. Because of that, remember, we are one. You are our slave. You are our wife. We appointed you to all the positions you had in the past. Because of that, join us to go to the East and cross. That is a simple game plan. Unless you're intelligent enough, you to understand it. But that's what that is. We know. We know they'll go to Yoruba first. After Yoruba, they'll come to the East and then they'll die there. But in the meantime, they want to use Hopo Zodema and George Obiozo to a proper people state as the flag bearer of Islamic Janja Buddhism in the East. From today, anywhere you see George Obiozo arresting, from today, take it they are mad. They want to turn him state into a caliphate, a mini caliphate, 
so that the ginger weed can come in and tell us, oh, we are we are all co-owners of Nigeria and Nemo State for that matter. They said with Rogers Abogawasa. Rogers Abogawasa. I don't know even why they're still bringing in Pampas. You know, the, he wears Pampas now. I don't know why they're still bringing it in. You know what I mean? When a man starts wearing Pampas, you know what is going on. I don't have to tell you much. But listen to me very carefully. El Rufa is the governor of Kaduna State. No Fulani, Janjaweed, so-called frontline politician or journalist condemned him. Nothing at all. This was the same governor that won, a hoodlum that won foreign observers that I came to monitor elections that if APC doesn't win, he will kill them and send them back in body bags. That is why I am in the USA, but El Rufa cannot come to the USA. Supposedly, I'm a terrorist and a criminal. He's a governor, executive governor. Where I, places I go to, he cannot go to those places. I'm in America. El Rufa cannot come here. He cannot because he is the real terrorist. Because the world knows he's the terrorist. Do you know one funniest thing that people don't know? Let me shock everybody who is listening now. It may come to you as a surprise. Do you know that Boko Haram has never ever been designated as a terrorist group in Nigeria? Do you know that? I heard this very morning, this very morning I was listening to Megun, um, um, uh, uh, diary. A brilliant young man that speaks the truth. It was there. He said it, and I and I and I said that is true. And do you know when efforts were going on in the USA to designate Boko Haram a terrorist group? Do you know that Britain was against it? Do you know that Britain was against labeling Boko Haram as a terrorist group? Do you know that Nigeria never tagged Boko Haram as a terror group? That was the why they were calling them insurgents then. You never hear full any man or in government called Boko Haram a terrorist group, never. If you go to where they do their gazetting in the zoo, you will not see Boko Haram as a terrorist group. Go and check. It was the United States of America that designated Boko Haram as a terrorist group. But IPOB is a terrorist group to full any. They think they're clever, you know. <laughs> they think they're so smart. You think you can use the tag of terrorism to shackle us, to bind us together, to chain us to your stupidity. So we will not talk. We won't speak. And then your people from the Sahel will be slaughtering and murdering their way all the way to the Atlantic. Is that what, what you think? And then we'll allow you to do it? All of you are insane. That is to tell you how hypocritical Nigeria is, and especially the so-called Fulani uh, uh, upper looting class. I won't call them elite because elitism connotes a lot of things that this people, it has a lot of qualities to it. This people will never ever aspire to nor meet in their entire existence on this very earth. They are useless. They are nothing, absolutely nothing. Today we are going to teach them what they don't know. Who will be more dangerous than Governor Al-Bashir? Bununu of Bauchi State, who amid the tension already in the country felt that it was appropriate to have Fulani headsmen continue to carry AK-47. When elements within them were proven to be involved in kidnappings and killings across the whole South, you come to the South, you kill us. You want us to be singing hallelujah as you're slaughtering us. As some pastors will, all they're concerned about is um, offering and tithe. But I, I do commend most of the pastors that have spoken. Some preachers came up to condemn what is going on. That is one that always speaks very, very consistently about the evil and dangers of Flanagan Janja Buddhism. Nobody can condemn them to tell that what is happening, the present state of insecurity in the country was well planned by the Fulani and the British. They planned it together. Britain said to them, don't worry, we'll control the world. Don't worry, don't worry. Go ahead and slaughter them. And that's what they're doing. And doing it in earnest. That is why we are here today preaching this very gospel. The time now is exactly one minute past 1 p.m. here. It's in the afternoon in Houston, Texas, because the world is spinning. You know, before I never believed. And when I was young, I felt that if, if it was dark, you know, it's dark everywhere else in the world. Until I went to secondary school and that class two, we learned that the world is actually round and it is spinning traveling at the speed of over 1,000 miles per hour. 
as we are right now, the world is spinning. That is why nothing stands still. Nothing can be in one place. That is how nature is. Nature was designed in a way that you cannot stand in one place. If you do, something will happen to you. If not, not a glass of water. If you leave a glass of water in one, in one place, it will start to smell after a while. See this, drink, this water you drink? Go and fetch water now and put it in one place. Outside, just cover it. After three months, come back to that water and smell it. It will start smelling. Normally, water shouldn't have any smell. Because nature abhors anything that stands still. And in the zoo, most of you are standing still. Most of your brains are standing still. You do not follow the times. You are not working with the, with the tide of the time. That is why a flannel can deceive all of you. Come out with all these nonsensical statements. And you believe them. Let me tell you, you know what I have done? You see, you can go online on social media and you can find newspapers commenting and writing things about Biafra, IBOB, Namdekano, and etc. If you go to Google, you cannot see it. If you go to Google, if you Google my name right now, all the news you see is one week old, one month, two months, and all of them negative. Some of you don't understand the, that we are in the heat of a battle. You cannot see it. Go there, you will see what I'm telling you. All the news, every news where we've been critical of what is happening in the zoo, where we've highlighted what's happening in the zoo, they will never report it. You cannot see it online, never. If you go to Google search or any search engine, you will see it. Because they are prepared. With a war chest of 30 billion, every white consultancy firm, every firm of lawyers and media and PR firms in the Western world wants a chunk of it. And some, we are human beings. Sometimes when you give somebody $3 million to try to suppress a news that doesn't affect your family, conscience will go through the window. That's exactly what is happening. And that is why idiots like Kadira Ahmed can come up and be spew spewing all this trash. And you allow them. That is why they will have the temerity to rise up and say that European people are their slaves and all of you are quiet and doing nothing about it. Very, very sad indeed. They will never understand the reason why Yoruba youths are fighting to keep their land. Because headsmen went to Ogun State, slaughtered a woman, and dumped her corpse behind Obasanjo's farm in Ota. In Ogun State. They killed a Yoruba woman in her farm and dumped her body behind Obasanjo's farm. Because Obasanjo was one of those instrumental in the coming of Buhari. They said to Obasanjo, we made you who you are. We appointed you. Whoever you are today is down to our patronage. Because of that, you must support this murderer, this killer called Buhari. And he did. But thankfully, Buhari died. That is why Aisha ran away. Because I preached about Aisha a few days ago. Today in the news, there is a news. Uh, one group commend Aisha. She's 50 years old, a young girl to me. Aisha is a small girl to me. Aisha who in the village should be calling me dead. Some of you bow before her. You say we are a small boy. Of course, you, uh, thank goodness. Please continue to call me a small boy. I love it. Huh? That is why I'll keep looking young. I am older than Aisha Buhari. Aisha is a baby. Aisha in the village. If I come, she'll prepare food for me to eat. I'm older than her. By over three years. Aisha is a baby to me. In our culture, once somebody's older than you by two years, you call them dead or that, that, that's how it's done. Not now that this indomitable generation that have no respect. She's 50. She's in Dubai, partying with her boyfriend from the Niger Republic. His name is Yusuf Abubakar Mohammed. He is the one wearing Buhari's mask. And we shall expose them. And all of you will be shocked the day we will expose them even more because you are running away from the truth. Then we bring the truth to you. Since you are running from the truth, we shall endeavor to be... Uh, they killed... The, the, Kadira Ahmed will not tell you this. Those talking about Yoruba being their slave and their wife, they won't tell you about this. Ishola was abducted around 11 a.m. on Monday. Monday, a few days ago, two days ago. She was found dead the following day. Fulani headsmen killed her. Fulani Janjawood. They are everywhere. We are the only ones stopping them only IPOB. That is why I am so proud of this family you don't know. 
Sometimes people say he's arrogant. Why wouldn't I be? I have the finest family in the world, in the history of the world. Behind every move we make, every utterance we make, why shouldn't I be proud of them? That Nigeria is still existing and not a caliphate today is down to IPOB. Nobody else, no human being. If Nigeria restructures down to the resistance of IPOB, because we resist the ginger weed, that is why even the little concession they have made, that's why they're making, they want to try Yoruba for the last time. If Yoruba were to stand strong now, if Yoruba were to stand strong now, people will be wondering, but why is he thinking about Yoruba? Because that is where the Achilles heel lies. If Yoruba remains very strong, the future will be bright. But if they capitulate under this, you know, we are used to it. IPOB, you, you can throw your propaganda from now to yesterday. It doesn't concern also. I'm telling you the truth. It doesn't, you can talk all your, you can bring your BBC to run their documentary. You can bring all of them to write their rubbish. It doesn't affect us. We continue what we're doing. Yoruba must be, must be strong now. Now, now, today. Yoruba must be strong today in order to defeat these evil people there because they are evil. They are evil. If you want to stay in Biafra land, you go to the township and live there. If you stay in the villages, you're looking for trouble. And if you're looking for trouble, you are going to get it. Once you get it, you are finished. Once you get it, you are finished. That is something that people must understand. That trouble you are looking for, once you get it, you are gone. You are finished. You are finished. Because we are not going to relent. We are not going to retreat. We are not going to surrender. Be rest assured. And uh, who puts on them my things is very clever. You know how these idiots that go, like uh, they for my, these fools that go to the north. They think they are very smart. They think they, they have brain. They think other people don't. Because they have done 419. They have done 419, they, they have done Yahoo Yahoo before, but who puts on the man and, and the devil Mahi because they have been doing obtaining by things, writing email, convincing people and duping them. They think they can dupe us. That's what they think. They can use their trickery, their email, their, their Yahoo Yahoo skills to trick us into buying uh, our own chain with which the family will enslave all of us. But heaven will forbid. They cannot succeed. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. I don't know why people even, why some people take time to be convinced. Why should you become, why should you take time to be convinced? Why? I'm asking you. Why? Can you not see what is going on? Can't you see what is happening? I ask you. Are all of you deaf and dumb and blind? You cannot see what is going on. You cannot see what is happening. Can you not see it? Lakey gone. Is Lakey not finished? Do you know why the protest in Lekki ended? Because there was no IPOB in it. Because we didn't give the order for them to come out in Lagos. And the, the protest after four, at, for two and a half hours, the thing collapsed. It collapsed. Next time they will know how important we are. But what I'm saying to all of you today, to those of you who may not know, to those of you who are hard at hearing, to those of you who are finding it very difficult to understand why we do what we do, is that if you do not do what we are asking you to do, then you are in very, very serious trouble. I assure you, you will sink. Full and eight ginger weed will swallow you whole. And then in your next life, you, you'll be looking and begging for IPOB family to join. But today, it is not too late. It is not too late today. You must come out to do the needful. And the needful is supporting everything that IPOB is doing. If you support us, you will leave. If you don't support us, you will die. Something that we used to say before, when we say, they will say, oh, he's talking nonsense. He doesn't know what he's saying today, even with a showing But I keep saying, going back to with a showing Because the people allowing this nonsense to happen in Nigeria, are you, I'm saying it in the open. If the Yorubas put their feet down to say, to say enough is enough. All this nonsense will come to an end. That's why they are running to them. Because they know that the Yorubas cannot be complaining about the same thing that the Biafrans are complaining about. Oduluwa and Biafra cannot be, because if we say what we are saying, they'll say, oh, the reason why they want because they are rebels. Ojuku says that they are rebels. Britain can sell that narrative to the world. But if the same thing that Biafrans are complaining about, Yorubas are complaining about the same thing at the same time, the world 
is now under obligation to listen because these two people cannot be mad at the same time. Do you see the trick there? Do you see what the Flanders are trying to do? Because now the Yoruba people are complaining and the, all, the, all the, the submissions, all the correspondence that the Yorubas have sent to all world bodies corresponds with what IPOB has been doing for years. And it is in the same Nigeria, the same geopolitical space. So what, the Fulani, what Britain told Fulani to do now is go and get the Yorubas to be on your side. If you get them to be on your side, when the Biafrans are complaining, the world will say, oh, you won't just want to succeed. But once Yoruba is saying the same thing that the Igbos are saying, that Biafrans are saying, then the world will now listen. Do you see their trick? That is why I keep referencing Wole Shoyenka because he was one of those that supported Buhari when the idiot was alive. When the mother was alive, when Buhari was alive, Wole Shoyenka was one of those that supported him because Jonathan was a soft touch. Anybody can kick him to the curb, but not Buhari and the Fulani Janjaweed. He supported them. I don't know how much they gave him. <laughs> he supported them. Let us hear what he has to say. <laughs> we are always right. As I keep saying, we always win. All those who are doubting us, can't you reason for once? Why is it that at the end of the day, everybody justifies IPOB's position? And no matter what you do, you come back to acknowledge that we are right after all. Let us listen to Wole Inka again on the issue of who is in Asarok. Everybody knows that Buhari is dead. They know that. Even, even Okoko, Okoko, foul chicken knows in Asarok that the idiot is no longer there. Where is Aisha? Where is Aisha, your second lady or third lady? Where is she? Because you people are... That is why, anyway, uh, Trump looked at Africans and said, hey, these people are jokers. There is no honor and there is no dignity. People are born in lies, steeped in deception. And they think we are all like them. That is why they open their mouth and their mouth, they, they yap gibberish all the time. I want to prove to you that Buhari is dead. Listen to Wolesha Inka, for goodness sake. This UG. What happened to me with this incident? It's just typical of what's happening to millions of people all over the country. And we cannot just sit still and say we're relying on central help when obviously it's not coming. Are you listening Buhari to that? does not appreciate the situation. Mm -hmm. He doesn't understand. I see no evidence that he understands how grave the situation is. I've said it again and again, but I don't believe he's in charge huh? because it's not possible in what? my view. What did he say? State, the commander in chief. I see no evidence mm -hmm. that he understands how grave the situation is. I've said it again and again, but I don't believe he's in charge because it's not possible in my view for a head of state, the commander in chief, of the armed forces to say he's presiding over a nation and things get to this level. Something is critically wrong in the leadership, within the leadership of this nation. And that is where we see... Are you listening? There is nowhere on this earth you will have a commander-in-chief. School children are being abducted, people are being slaughtered every day, and the dirt keeps quiet and keeps speaking through Garabashi. If Garabashehu wants to die, let him come out and say he's the leader of the Fulani Janjaweed Cabal running the zoo called Nigeria headquartered in Asorok. You, you, I, I don't know how else you want it. Buhari is not there. There is no way, even if he's a cockroach who's in charge of any nation in the world, no country can be going through what the zoo is going through. And the president will not speak. No, we are on this earth. Only in the zoo. Do you see why I call Nigerians animals? They don't reason. They never ever reason. Do you see it? Well, Shenka is telling you that uh, you don't have anybody there. There is no, nobody in Asarok. <laughs> because uh, it defies logic that you have a commander in chief of the armed forces. And this is going on. A idiot decided to say nothing. Garabashe will come out and tell us, uh, uh, he's his style. Since when? This was a man that went to Yoruba land to go and warn them about the clashes between the so-called North and the West. 
when he wasn't the head of state. Some of you don't read. You don't know your history. Buhari went to the same one year to go and warn them. When there was a clash in the past, when he wasn't even then the head of state. Talk less of now that people are dying everywhere, including his beloved Kasina, where his mother comes from. Who doesn't know that Buhari is not a Nigerian? That Buhari's father came with Doc to sell and met the mother from Daura and married her. Who doesn't know that? Only stupid, idiotic Nigerians. Fools everywhere. Idiots everywhere. That is why I insult you because you don't reason. Once you're a Nigerian, you, don't, you have no brain. You cannot reason very well. Shenka is telling you, you cannot have any head of state anywhere in the world. Now, anything I say, Garaba Sheikh, or anything that Femi Additional says, you should consider that is the president saying it in a time of crisis, in a time of war, more or less, internal strife, threat to life and limb. And you're telling us that what you say, we should regard as, as the president talking. And I'm sure, having said this now, on Radio Biafra today, believe you me, before seven days, did you have to speak, or before the month runs out? They will record, they will put, you know, using deep fake video and I and uh, artificial intelligence AI, they will put something together and play for you, not live. They won't allow journalists to ask him questions, which is, the, you know, he's having fun. I don't know if he takes Tramadol or Ecstasy. You know, he's a young man, very active, to have kept Aisha Buhari in, in Dubai, keeping her busy all this while in Dubai. He is no mean feat. The young man is having fun in Dubai. All of you are shouting one Nigeria in the zoo. Um, 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 bunch of animals everywhere. We are live and we are direct and we have to preach the truth here. You may not like it, but we have to preach it. I don't believe Buhari is in charge because it is not possible for a commander in chief of the armed forces to say he's presiding over a nation and things get to this level. Common sense, which we don't have in Africa. That was why the white man colonized us. That was why the white people came to Africa and divided us into pieces because we do not reason. Oh, my goodness me. Very, very sad indeed. But I, I thank him for his um, candor, at least he's admitting. Now that the, the, the Fulani cattle clashed with his lettuce and cucumber, he's now speaking up until it affects you. And these are the intelligent class, so to speak. You will stay there and watch evil happen to other people and you say nothing until it affects you, until your, your family is suffering. Then now you speak. Typical black people. Typical, typical black people. Until it affects you. When somebody's corpse, so another family is bereaved, it doesn't affect you until you suffer the same thing. What is wrong with you black people? What on earth is wrong with you people? What is wrong with your brain? Yoruba, you are there. The daughter of Papashiati was killed. Your forest taken over and they are coming to preach to you that you are one before. Whereas they are in your forest. Tell Fulani, if you want to prove to us that we are one, vacate our forest. Nobody is living in the forest in the north. No southerner is living in the forest in the Janja weed call north. Nowhere. Every time they bypass the debate, each time they bypass farmer head that clash. How can a farmer be in the south? You bring your cattle from the north, you say it's a clash. You come into my farm and you destroy my crops, you're calling it a clash. Oh, she naked and I'm in the on this huge black people, black, black, black. God forbid. God forbid. You saw the these so-called bandits full on it, kidnapping school children over and over again. They kidnap school children. Over and over again, they keep kidnapping school children. Why is it you don't ask yourself this question? Who are the people committing these crimes? The same people, the same full on it, the same full on it every blessed day. Somebody said. We learned how to kidnap. Somebody said we learned how to kidnap from the 
Niger Delta people. That's what they said from Niger Delta militants. That was how they learned how to kidnap. That was what somebody, a Janjaweed, opened his mouth and said, a Janjaweed from the north. Now, let me ask you something. In the history of everything you may have written or heard about Niger Delta militancy, did you hear any day that they kidnapped school children? Did you hear ever before that anything, even during the worst times of insecurity in the South, that anywhere that school children, children were kidnapped, is only in Janja with North, and they're bringing it down until you lose any of your children, until they kidnap your child, you will not be able to rise up and condemn what is evil. That is what makes you a black person. You are not black for no reason. You are black because of your wickedness. And I'm saying this without apologies to anybody. Because if we, if we black people are not wicked, why must we wait until something affects us before we take action? Why? Um, I'm too. This body went away. I'm very, very upset. Honestly speaking, very, very upset. I am not happy about what is going on in the damnable zoological republic. In the damnable zoological republic, they kidnapped school children at a place called Kagara. Bandits with RPG. Kadira Ahmed will not see it and comment on it. Never. Arewa United or whatever they call the idiots call themselves, they can never see such and condemn it. You saw school children with so-called bandits. Have you heard of any condemnation from any Fulani governor? What concerns them are those they sent into your bushes to, to slaughter you and to take over your land. Is it making sense now to all of you? I believe it is. I believe it is. Uh, uh, Abdul Salami Abubakar, uh, Nigeria is moving towards the same. Why won't the zoo listen to you? He is exactly the, uh, uh, You know, they, they have no shame. Maybe I should stop talking about them. They have no shame, these, these people. These are the people that drafted or copied the constitution in such a way or skewed it in such a way that Fulani gets everything. You and I know that Fulani cannot run a country. Let us be honest. Stop deceiving yourselves. Fulani cannot run a country. You know that very well only by moving cattle from place to place. You are aware of all this nonsense, yet this Janjaweed, they put together a constitution. Today he's complaining. Nigeria moving towards this. Why would it, it would disintegrate? Oh? It must. Oh. I don't know for my Yoruba brothers. If they like, let them go and join their flannel once again. That is their business. I don't care. But it will disintegrate. The zoo must disintegrate. Because this time around, we owe no apologies to anybody. We are not, we are, we are not begging UN. Uh, before it's, uh, you went, can you come and do a referendum? No, we are not begging you. You Britain will convince you to side the Fulani under the guise of one Nigeria to attack us. And then you see what God will do to, to mankind. You, you think that coronavirus is a joke. You will see what how God will destroy all of you, one after the other. So come and join them once again. Because that is what Britain does. That's the only job that Britain does to support evil. Have you this... People kidnapped, children, school children kidnapped by Fulani. Have you heard Britain condemn it? Will you see it on BBC News? BBC, do you, are you telling me that a busload of children were kidnapped in Egypt? It will be everywhere. Everywhere. Ask yourself why is because once BBC reports it, the world will ask them, who are those doing this kidnapping anyway? They will say it's Fulani headsmen or Fulani terrorists. Britain doesn't want Fulani to get a bad name. That is why the kidnapping of children doesn't affect them. It doesn't affect them at all, at all, at all, which is very, very sad. Very, very sad indeed. Extremely sad indeed. These are the things that we must know and fight against. These are the things we must learn to fight against. If Yoruba allow themselves to be deceived by Fulani, that is their business. But as for us, we are not moving one inch from where we are. We want total disintegration of the zoo. Total disintegration of the damnable zoological republic. And what is happening? What is happening? In Imo, it's also happening in Abia. Ibazu went, they gave him governor. They, don't worry, we'll lead you back in. 
and uh, Abia local government taken over by killer headsmen, bandits, and criminals. And you want us to allow them there? These are lawbreakers. The House of Reps on Tuesday told Inspector General of Police Mohammed Adamu that criminals, killer headsmen, and bandits have taken over all roads leading to Isikwato and Umunuj, local government areas of Abia State. And some idiots are asking, there are people from Isikwato and Umunuj in America. They are here eating hamburger and getting fat on the sweat of other people. They are in America, they are doctors, they are, they are well successful people in America. But the road that leads to their father's compound has been blocked by a full of the terrorists. But they are in America having fun. They are in America. When we talk about ESN, they have nothing to contribute. There is no help. And I'm asking them, without ESN, who is going to defend this water? Who is going to stop them at human noche? Who will do it? I'm asking them. In America, they're in America here. If there is Isu Quarter meeting in America, do you know that? Isu Quarter meeting is here in America. Ben, the meeting is here in America. Their homes are being taken over by foreign terrorists. They're in America. They're enjoying in America. Now you want Trump to fight for you? You want American politicians to fight for you? They will ask you, where are you from? You say, you see, what, what have you done? You are from Bend. What have you done to stop or to help those who are stopping them in your land? Nothing. And you're in America. You want to, you're doing Black Lives Matter in America. Whereas the lives of those that women know, it doesn't matter. The lives of you see, people doesn't matter. When they call for the protest, Black Lives Matter in America, you come out. But when Fulani take over your land and ESN is fighting to save you, to save your ancestral home, you do nothing. In other house of Anya, you are looking at them to die, to sweat, to defend your land that you are in America. Enjoying. God will punish all of you. Take a Unoako. I wish I can go to Super Top in America. I will tell them what they never said to hear in their lives. Because they are stupid. Very, very stupid set of idiots. Idiots. You are in America enjoying. Full and bandits have taken over in Sequato. You are in America having fun. You are having fun in America. Chileke uno ako. Ndiara. Chileke uno ako. Useless set of people everywhere. You think you're smart. Look at a black man's brain. Look at how stupid you are. You are in America. You are from bed there. Full and they are everywhere in our land. And you are, you are attending a party. A party, you got. I have to close this program, honestly. Our people are very, very annoyed. Sometimes, I don't know why Chico Kirabiyama gave me this, this very mission. I'm telling you the truth. You people make me sick. You make me very, very sick. There is a way an Igbo man does his sense and you begin to wonder. You know, there's, some, uh, there's a way you do sense. It becomes counterproductive. Like a Hanese sense. You know Hanese sense. Look at where we are today. Have you, since Yanwo came out and spoke like a man, and they, they, they reminded him of when he came and knelt down to beg them to make him the president. Has he not gone to sleep? You see, the, the life of um, Sabo and compromise is not good. Tanko Yakasai responded to him. Only once. Or is it Junaid? No, Junaid Mohammed. That talkative for Alamadri. Junaid Mohammed responded to Modo only once. Told Modo, Do you, I remember you coming to kneel before me to beg me to make you the president of Nigeria. And since that day, Modo hasn't spoken to you today. These are the idiots you call your leaders. You know, Hanese. These are the, the wretched refraps you call intellectuals. Men without shame and honor. How about if you hear something away? Can you say something about Tindam? They can, you cannot. Can you say something about IPOB leadership? You cannot. When Fulani hear our names, they go into convulsion. That's how formidable we are. Look at him, Yawod. He was barking like a pussycat. They reminded him of when he came to bed, he ran away. Has he spoken since then? The answer is no. Let me close this program, please. I'm not taking any calls or answering any questions. I'll, I'll be... People from Isikwato, Isikwato meeting in America, you should, you should all be ashamed of yourselves. You shouldn't exist. All of you should not exist. Ben, the meeting in America should be shut down. You have no right to exist. Let me, I'll be back in America in the summer. And I would like to meet some of you face to face to tell you, to tell you to, in, in your face how stupid you are. You're in America enjoying people without shame and honor. Let me close the program, please, because I'm too upset to continue. This is rubbish, pure rubbish.
Indeed, but but it's just you. They will talk over your land. Let me see where you go. Uh, you you run to your go and tell the congressman. You cannot tell him. Uh -huh. You cannot. You're eating hamburger and, and, and having party. And and, and uh, 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 every month you send hundred dollars back home to to help the family, and you think you've arrived. Useless people everywhere and deeper. Let me close this program. Be covered up on the money. Go, please. Good night. Good afternoon. Or good evening. Whatever you are. We'll catch you from. Thank mm -hmm. you.